All right, everyone. How's it going? Uh, welcome to Hello. another episode. Here we talk about regular people selling their house to a cash buyer like us. Uh, again, if you don't know who I am, my name is Rudy, and this is Larry Wagner. Hey, Larry. Good morning, it's Larry. nice and sunny out where you are. It is nice and sunny today. It is. Um, I... I can't tell whether you are because the blinds are drawn. Oh, it's a sunny day. It, oh, yeah, there you go. It's a nice day today. Um, I I called you in today to talk to you about um, someone who reached out and asked about a foundation issue on their home. Um, I thought it was a really good conversation that we had. So I, I know you've dealt with homes that have foundation issues. Yep. Oh. Matter of fact, my daughter's home she bought with massive foundation issues. Really? I have some. Oh, absolutely. How long has she but, owned it for? Oh, she's been there five years now. Five years. Matter of fact, just about now. Yeah. Did she have um, any interesting issues? Story. Did she have any issues what now? Was that? Did it? Did the? No. No issues now. She does not. We we're very fortunate. Uh, it was. It was. There was a three-inch wide crack mm -hmm. run down the entire length of the foundation. Wow. And nobody buy the house. Nobody would buy the house, been in the market for a very, very long time. And five years ago, house was selling very quickly, like not so re like mm -hmm. recently. And the house has been in the market most of a year. And nobody would touch price drop after price drop after price drop. Nobody would touch it. Nobody. Because everyone's scared of it. That's the single worst Why thing you could see in a house. That scares people. How come anyway. you did? Like, what was it? Something that you just had. A, you knew probably. You had experience, right? Yeah, about. Well. Right. Well, she called me in to look at it. And when we buy houses, we don't bring in inspectors. So she felt if I could buy, you know, 50 houses a year without bringing an inspector in, she'd save the money on the inspector and call mm -hmm. me in. I saw that the house had a lot of problems, but nothing my team, or I say our team, couldn't have handled. So basically, it was we're buying it like a flip house, like a house, like an investment house, except she was buying with her money and she was going to mm -hmm. live in the house. But we, I treated it as such because she bought – basically, she followed in dad's footsteps, bought the worst house in the block or looked for the worst house in the block at the lowest possible price yeah. in the neighborhood and said, that'll fix it to me. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. So uh, she's got her – she's got oh, me wrapped on her little that's pinky. Sweet. That's sweet. daughter. So um, – but with that in mind, uh, I was very proud of her. By the way, a quick funny story, and that is that she had been looking at houses online for a couple of months, living in my house with us. She was 24 when she bought the house. Uh, she bought it two days before her 25th birthday. She tried to get it in before she was 25. And she didn't tell me she was looking at houses for about two months mm -hmm. online. Even though I do this for mm -hmm. a living, she didn't want to tell me. She's a she very wanted to be daughter. her own self. And, but when it came to look yeah. at the houses, she wanted to. She, she wanted to do it on herself, on her own, I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. When it came to actually see the houses, then she let me know she had been looking and she wanted me to go visit them with her because she wanted my critical eye. So uh, why would I let her buy a house with a three-inch crack in the foundation? Without going too much detail, but there was stuff done to the house. They made it look like that crack hadn't moved in 19 years, at least 19 years. Um, too complicated a story as to why it was something done to the house I'd never seen myself. Multiple things done to the house I'd never seen. But I felt it wasn't going to move any longer. The house is on a hill, and the back the house is basically sliding downhill, okay. and it broke and slid downhill by about three yeah. inches. But I don't think it was moving any longer except for the last nineteen. That's years. That's dangerous. So I felt comfortable. Yeah, it is a scary thing, and but she wanted a bargain, and if Dad says it's okay, it's okay. But Dad wasn't knowledgeable enough to say it's okay. So what did I do, Rudy? We're real estate investors. What do we have? We, we have a team. team, right? Right on the team, yeah. we have everybody from engineers to architects to contractors to plumbers, electricians, and so on, expediters and whatnot. So I called my my engineer. I sent him a picture of the house. I then got him on um, on um, my phone, and we, I showed him a video of the yeah. house. And it was fascinating. He said, oh, Larry, if it continues to move, but you say you don't think it's moved for at least 19 years, because that's how long the previous owner had been there. If it continued to move, there was a solution for it, and it would cost about $10,000. And it was a matter of putting helical coils. You don't have to really know what they mean. 
every like eight feet hmm. in the backyard That's deep into the soil, basically as like a stop yeah. to stop the house and then bolt it to the foundation. Something complex. There's only about ten thousand dollars worth. That's of surprising. Work. I but thought it would be. It like was. More. I was shocked. Uh, these are some of the questions I that I wanted to them. ask because sure. um, a lot of folks who who don't call them sometimes they do call and they are they're honest about it. So, but some people want to hide that kind of issue because they know how severe it oh. is and they know that someone right. who's looking at the home and sees a crack in their foundation they're not going to want to buy it. So um, I want to bring it up because not many people are. Uh, but here are some questions that I wanted to ask you and I you. You're the most experienced person I know when it comes to real estate. Um, so Thank you. I know that if I come to you for anything, you're going to have an answer. And if you don't have an answer, you're going to figure it out. Right. 15 years doing real estate and then 10 years in construction. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is so what I, I learn a lot from you. So yeah. when someone comes from to, to me, I might already have the answer because you know why? I spoke with Larry Wagner already about this. Okay. <laughs> go to the source. Go to the source. And then I go to other people for my answer, so I look Yeah, good. there you go. There you go. Okay, so this th – okay, we're just going to imagine this person has a house listed for sale with an agent. Why didn't the mm -hmm. agent or homeowner call an engineer themselves? So if, if you have this house listed for sale, why didn't the agent just tell me right. to call an engineer? You, you did it on your own, but if I'm the homeowner, right. I should depend on the right. agent to tell me something. Yes. I, my mind's going in multiple directions to how to answer that question. One, I can address the agent. Yeah. Or two, I can address the idea of making a call. Uh, let's put the agent aside for this discussion. Why would the homeowner have made the call? Uh, agents and homeowners don't think of making the call. An airplane's going by. No, that's it's fine. not too loud in the audio here. I can hear you. There you go. And... They don't think that way, number one. But number two, let's assume the eight, the homeowner made the call or even the agent made the call to an engineer. And an agent should have a team of people like I do. They should have an engineer, an, an right. attorney, a contract. They should have those people as well to get an idea of what things cost exactly. to repair, to help the homeowner sell their house. But I find agents are, are pretty straightforward in what they do, and that's not typically what they do. So, and I'm now going to buy your house, Rudy. You say, well, I do see a three. Well, I'm sure you see a three inch foundation crack. Don't worry about it because my engineer said just put some helical coils in the backyard, eight feet in, eight feet apart in the ground and bolt into the foundation and you should be fine. Would that have made me want to buy the house anyway? Probably not. No, 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 <laughs> no. There are other houses I can go buy that don't require helical coils, put in the ground eight feet apart. I don't even know what a helical coil is. Well, I happen to know it is, but right. people don't. And so... It, I don't think it would have changed anything. Should the homeowner have done it? Yeah. If well, my house, would I do it? Yeah. When my daughter goes to sell the house, will she have all the answers? Yeah. Will she have a history of the house? Yeah. Will she have measured that crack the day we bought the house? And it was, it was two and seven eighth inches wide, five feet above the ground, and we wrote it on the wall. And when she sells the house, it's going to be two and seven eighth inches wide. And that's so, still going to be So there. it's not going to move. So we're going to show. She's been in the house. Yeah. 19 years before I thought it never moved. The five years or eight years of years in the house, it never moved. But it's if done. I go back to so, the uh, agent, now that you separated them, yeah, we no, know that the works. owners are not going to think about calling an engineer, maybe. Um, but if, if right. the agent is hired, shouldn't the agent give some advice? Yes. I... It's tough to say, right? Because it, it depends on the individual agent. I, yes. Some agents, her agent didn't. The homeowner was a little bit weird. I, let me even back up. I want to be fair. I don't know what the agent told the seller okay. to do. I know what the okay. seller did. She did nothing. <laughs> okay. The, so I can't comment about the agent. The agent may have told her to do it. These people had no money. So they probably didn't want to spend the few thousand dollars to hire an engineer to come look at it. That could be too. But yes, an agent should have told them to deal with it. They should have at least filled the hole, the, the crack with, with concrete. So it becomes a little less obvious. It doesn't look so looming. It was literally a hole right wow. to the outside. Um, it, it was incredibly ominous, incredibly yeah. ominous. So, uh, but we bought it. And now, it, fine. Well, if she bought the it. owner, here's here another question. And I'm coming up with these on the fly. So I'm sorry that I sure. paused or interrupt you. 
I'll give the answers okay. on the fly too. Go ahead. So the if I have the house listed or if someone lists the home and they find a buyer like you, you you were a buyer and that, that homeowner had it listed. Um, would there be any issues down the line because of the crack foundation? It's a traditional sale. Oh yeah. So the buyer might get oh. have a mortgage. Um, you, you know where it. I'm going with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Forget it. There's no mortgage available. This house was not mortgaged. My daughter had to pay cash. R- really? And there was no way a bank's going to give you a mortgage. So three if I have it listed, if I find a buyer who just says, yeah, I'll take care of it. I love the kitchen. I love the bathrooms. It's a beautiful home. It's just a crack foundation. Can right. he? By the way, it was none by of those the- things. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was none of those things. But if I wanted to buy the home, if I'm the buyer and I see yeah. a crack foundation and I'm yeah. doing this a traditional route where I, I found the home listed for sale with a real estate agency. I made an appointment. I love the house. I want to buy it. You're telling me that I wouldn't be able to because of the crack foundation, even though I want to, the bank won't give me a, mo- a, lo- right. a loan, a mortgage. Yes and no. Depends on the severity of the, of the foundation damage. One of the key things banks look for is foundation damage. I guarantee this would not mm. have qualified. Most houses have some level of hairline cracks, multiple ones in the foundation, no big deal. Even water can come through them, no big deal. A crack literally this wide, uh, the entire height of the foundation and the basement floor. The house was so mm-hmm. tilted, the basement floor, the basement was, a, was an, a, a legal apartment and the living room section was about seven by mm-hmm. 10 feet. We had to put 80 bags, 80, what are they? Wow. 60 pound bags maybe of self-leveling concrete to level the floor oh, on a room boy. that's seven feet by 10 feet. It was at a level of about this much over 10 feet. So this house, and that's, the, the house literally just was sliding mm-hmm. downhill. So there were a lot of issues that we had to address in this house. The floors, ultimately, the kitchen floor and the level above also were all sloped. And so, the, so there was a lot of issues because of this foundation problem. You can't play marbles in the house. <laughs> that's for sure. And for those of you who, who don't know this by now, but when you get a loan or a mortgage, uh, the bank's going to want to get an inspection done or an appraisal done. And that's when they'll discover that there's a crack foundation because those third-party vendors, the appraiser, report to the bank. Don't they, Larry? I mean, I'm, I've done this Absolutely. enough to know that Absolutely. part. And so yeah. the, you, you, can, you can't hide. You can't say, oh, no, there's no problem because the bank will find out that there's – because you're getting a loan. They're, they're letting you borrow money. Okay. The bank's lending you a percentage of the current – value of the house which is interesting i'll get to in a moment but that house was devalued by about seventy five thousand dollars because of that crack wow so if that crack weren't there let's say the banks would loan you eighty percent of four hundred thousand dollars they'd loan you three hundred twenty thousand dollars well just for simple math not to tax my brain that's now only worth three hundred thousand dollars they're no longer going to loan you three hundred thousand dollars loan you eighty percent loan you two hundred forty thousand dollars so this is this is but that's why they need to know this. This is a really, it's the single most important thing I think a bank wants to know is their foundation mm-hmm. damage. And the cost of repair is so great. If it was a hundred thousand dollar repair and they gave you an 80% mortgage on a $400,000 house. And again, not to get too many numbers going on. It means it's going to cost you more to fix the house than the, than the equity in the yes. house. You may just choose to stop paying your mortgage before you right. fix the house. And now the bank's left with an, a non-performing mortgage. There's all sorts of reasons why they will not uh, finance a house in this What condition. if I just hide the issue? So, what if I just put a carpet over it, drywall it, just, you know, out of sight, out of mind? And 80 bags of self level <laughs> concrete later. The, um, you can. In New York State, there's a $500 disclosure law. Basically, when I buy any house from a homeowner, the homeowner gives me a $500, $500 credit, and I can't come after them for any damage I find in the house. And then when I sell the house, I give the homeowner a $500 credit, and they can't come after anything to me. And this just will go on for, forever and ever and ever in the state of New York. Uh, it allows people to do unscrupulous things like that. I'm not a big mm-hmm. fan, but it stops millions of lawsuits from happening. Uh, and I understand the point of it. But I think it opens up a Pandora's box of, of people doing things they shouldn't be doing. So that you're answering to yeah. higher power. Um, it's, it's just an immoral 
thing to do at this point. I don't think it's illegal because that five hundred dollar yeah. credit. I'm not positive on that. I'm not but a lawyer. But the thought of but like that getting worse it, and someone living in the home, like a, a family with kids, and something severe happens, correct. that's pretty dangerous. And, and correct. I wouldn't be able to live with myself the, knowing that. That's where we are. The case of my daughter's house right now, it's 24 years later. We know it hasn't moved in 24 years. Maybe longer than that. We know mm-hmm. of 24 years. I feel very comfortable if we were to sheetrock the room. Right now, it's a laundry room. She talked about sheetrocking it. She just never did. But if she sheetrocked it, it wouldn't be to hide the issue. It would be because she wants a sheetrock laundry room instead yeah. of a concrete one. And one day she will maybe before she sells house. Who knows? And if she does, I wouldn't feel the need to disclose it because I know it's no longer a problem. Got it. So that – but if it was still moving, there's no way I would do that. I like yeah. you. I wouldn't be I able to do it. myself a woman. So last yeah. question. Yeah. And I, I already know the answer to this question. It's a common sense question. But <laughs> what yeah. – or would you give me a lower offer because there's a foundation issue? Yes. I'd love to give a better offer to anyone listening to this – watching this uh, video who has a house with a foundation issue. But as I said, it could it could really devalue a house by as right. much as a hundred thousand dollars. And if I'm going to buy the house, I'm a real estate investor. I buy houses, I fix them, I sell them. I am not going to cover over a three inch crack in a foundation that I don't know is no right. longer moving. So therefore, I'm going to have to address that crack. And addressing a foundation crack doesn't mean filling with concrete. It means stopping the cause of the cracking. It's not as though something happened and it cracked three inches and it stopped. That has settled over a period of time. That house was built in 1956, I think it was. So when she bought that, it's now 2022. So she bought it, you know, five, four, five years ago, I guess. So she bought it decades and decades and decades yeah. after it was built. So sometime those first decades, yeah. this thing just happened again. So, but if I were to buy it, and I didn't know the history of the house. And they had done some repair, which lets me know it was at least 19 years that it was not moving. I would no way would I not disclose that. And therefore, if I'm disclosing it, I can't sell it because my buyers right. get mortgages. So therefore, I have to now fix it. And fixing can mean helical piles. It can mean thousands of dollars. Of very yeah. expensive. It can mean $100,000. Right. It can mean literally digging out a foundation, shoring up the house and putting yeah. in a new foundation. It can mean a lot of Folks, different things. We- so uh, the best way to equate yeah, sure. that one second, Rudy, is all the people that hit with super storm Stan- Sandy and had to raise their house and put new found and mm-hmm. lift their houses. It could be literally that, raising your house, ripping out the foundation, putting a new foundation. It could be as big as that, which runs about $100,000. I've seen that. Dollars. I've seen that they just use jacks and yeah. they, they'll they yep. drive down the road and you see houses this high up and they're, it's like floating. They're fixing the foundation. Yeah. And – it, yeah. it looks expensive. I mean, it's obviously expensive, but. It runs 60 to 100 grand, depending on the size of the house. And it, she's on a hill, which makes it even worse. And you can't even get equipment into part of the property because of the hill, which makes it maybe possibly even impossible. Ugh. I don't Well, I guess not impossible, but yeah, extra true. costly. Yeah. Extra costly. So all those things count. All those things count. So the answer is yes. We always will pay a fair price mm-hmm. for a property, but a fair price is based on the condition. But on a. But I find, luckily, our company is better capitalized. We've been doing this for 15 years, and we're more risk takers than much of our competition. So we're willing to buy houses that I find a lot of my other investor buddies are not willing to buy. And this would be a perfect example good. of one of them. I would have bought this house for that price. She, she negotiated a very good house. I'm very proud of her. I'm uh, most proud of I her. hope she's watching. But I'm proud of her in the real estate <laughs> arena. And the um, so with that said, uh, would we buy a house? Yes. Would all investors buy this house? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And would it be worth less than if it didn't have a crack? For sure. But is it retailable? Probably, this house, absolutely not. Again, yeah. not all foundation cracks mean the house is not able to be right. sold retail. Right. I want to make that clear. Uh, almost every house you buy has some, my house right here has mm-hmm. foundation cracks. Small ones, little hairline cracks. Yeah. It's the way it is. My house has, I think, three or four additions on it. Wherever the I sold my house with, cracks. with similar cracks. Back. You know, it, it's noted, yeah. it's reported, yeah. but they're not, right. there's no concern over them. But when you have a big right. gap like that where weeds are growing out of your crack, uh, out of the crack foundation, um, 
Uh, yeah, that's concerning. And, and, and I think someone will find out if, even if you try to hide it, it's going to happen. You can't. Well, you'll see the house mm -hmm. is drooping. I get in her kitchen, her refrigerator, one side's up on a three quarter, a refrigerator, one side's held up with a three quarter inch piece of wood. So over the course of the width of the refrigerator, the floor droops. Three oh, see. Inch. In the course of yeah. three feet, it droops three quarters of an inch, all back right. to that foundation problem. We fixed as much as we could, but not everything as far as mm -hmm. leveling the house. But the other comment I want to make, I wouldn't talk about, is home inspectors. When you get a buyer, assume you're even going to pay cash for a house, which few retail buyers do, mm -hmm. or can. You get a home inspector. Everyone, every retail buyer gets home inspector. 99% of retail home inspect buyers get inspectors. Inspectors take the smallest little detail and blow they it do. out of proportion. They, they I do. See we, we built a brand new 4,200 foot house in Dix Hills. And the inspector wrote, uh, unable to ascertain the condition of the roof because he didn't walk on the roof because mm -hmm. it's a very tall house. The house was two months old. It was built from the ground up. It is people said to me, what's wrong with the roof? That was their reaction to this. What's wrong with it? What was wrong? He says he wasn't able to determine if there were problems with it. it. Means he was too lazy to climb the <laughs> ladder. That's what's wrong with the roof. The roof is two months old. It's yeah. a brand new house. Anyway, so imagine what an inspector would do with foundation crack. The smallest mm. hairline cracks get written up in an inspection report and get blown out of proportion. Can lead to water damage, infiltration, yeah. mold. These are all things. I, they I think write it's because they want to cover crack. their behind. Yeah. They. They don't want Absolutely. for it to fall on them. So they have to make a, a horror story out of it just so that if they choose not to fix it, it doesn't come back on the inspector. A hundred percent correct. They have to cover their butt. Yeah. Oh, totally yeah. correct. So the answer is houses with foundation cracks of significance are not retailable. They can't be sold through MLS or conventionally through a realtor. They have to be bought by investors who are then going to be willing to take the chance and fix right. them and do whatever they have to do. By the way, there are unscrupulous investors who right. cover it up. But I don't want to prevent, pretend we're all choir boys. Not all of us are, but, um, but no. we don't do that no. ever, ever. So, but we, uh, but so we are the, the investors is, who will the buy the world. And, and that's the whole point of this video so that we can tell the public, if you have foundation issues, don't worry, don't stress it. We will be there. Right. To take a look and ins do our own little inspection. We're not going to have a third-party inspector come in there and make a horror story out of this. We're telling right. we're telling you now right. how it's going to look like. Um, it's it's going to be a simple process. We're going to be able to tell you. We're going to move quickly if you need to sell quickly. So if you know somebody who has a foundation issue or it's just any problem uh, with the house or having a problem selling the home. Please reach out to us. We want to help. If we can't help, we're at least wanting to educate you on, on what to do next if we're not a good fit. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's what we do. By the way, that foundation issue, I called the engineer right while I was walking through the house for the first time. We had an answer on our first walkthrough. Actually, our only walkthrough. Um, it was that that's fast. That's the way we work. It was that's yeah. Way we work. yeah. Yeah. Time is of the essence, yeah. and we, we, we take that seriously. If, if you need to move quickly, we take that seriously. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thank you, Rudy.